Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbi Shrahli Sadri wa Yassirli Amri wa Hlul Udatam Milisani Yafqaw Qawbi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yang berbahagia Profesor Teknologis Dr. Haji Muhammad Kamal Haji Arun, Deputy Vice Chancellor Academy and International UITM, which I consider him my mentor. Yang berbahagia Profesor Dr. Muhammad Nazib Suratman, Deputy Vice Chancellor Research and Innovation UITM. Yang berbahagia uh, Profesor Teknologis Dr. Muhammad Fauzi Ali, Deputy Vice Chancellor Development UITM, beliau keluar sebentar. Uh, yang berbahagia Profesor Datuk Dr. Mizan Hitam, Assistant Vice Chancellor Institute of Leadership and Development ILD. Yang berbahagia respective rectors and deputy deans, uh, distinguished uh, guests, ladies and gentlemen. Terlebih dahulu saya ingin mengucapkan rasa syukur kepada Allah Subhanahu Taala kerana dengan limpah kurnianya dapatlah kita bersama pada hari ini. Walaupun saya agak nervous. Ya. <laughs> okay, thank you all for accepting our invitation to be at this gracious occasion of professional lecture today with me. Thank you uh, all the TNCs for making time here. Yeah? My colleague at FKA and UITM in general, all the deans and directors, my lovely family members, my friends, and everyone, wherever you are, whether you are in UITM or outside. We have friends from other countries and industries as well, actually following this event. I really appreciate for all the support and this has given me the strength to be here today. Thank you for the generous introduction by Professor Dr. Hamida, the Deputy Dean Research Innovation and Alumni on my humble bio. I also would like to take this opportunity to extend my appreciation to the top management of UITM over the years since the beginning of my service 33 years ago until now for giving me the opportunity to impart my knowledge to UITM students, UITM community, industries, as well as the whole community. Okay, now let's start my purpose here. Okay. All right, I will talk a little bit about my research history, which also have already been elaborated just now. I started in 1999, it's quite late actually, even though I start working in UITM in 1986, but it's at uh, the PPP UITM, so it's not a research center. So in 1999, I first embarked into oil palm reinforced concrete studies, and then 2001, I started working on timber per se, even though oil palm uh, is also part of the uh, lilorosic material considered as plant and then also can be used for, for reinforced concrete. And uh, between that time also I work on solid timber, uh, structure size timber, more for permissible stress design requirement. And then 2004 where I start my PhD, I work on bonded in timber connection with nano polymer adhesive. This is the place where I start working with polymer, uh, where initially I have zero knowledge on that. It's quite a struggle, uh, but alhamdulillah, with the uh, assistance from the supervisor and my colleague in uh, University of Bath, now I can be considered a nano expert. <laughs> All right, so there are many uh, outcomes from that project, but I'm not going to explain that in here. All right, in 2008, I started working on glue, lam glue laminated timber and then continue with other engineered timber product, including CLT in 2016 until today, plus other uh, composite material along the way. All right, so besides that, uh, timber, uh, working on timber, I also work on um, wood wool cement board, which is also incorporating uh, timber strand in the cement board. And then uh, working on KNAF, uh, water rating system to get a good fibers, long fibers, then incorporate it into concrete. And then I also work on a Lego like uh, a building block uh, cement based uh, bricks, yeah, which has been commercialized. 
and then the wood wool is actually we have prototype in Puncha Alam and then there's a company working on that one so there are many so but today uh, for this purpose I only concentrate on timber there are many types of timber product that I have worked on but I only can uh, dwell on four types of timber product for the purpose of this lecture which has greatest impact to you, uh, Malaysia in general yeah okay now before that I would like also to express my dedication uh, to the timber research partner all right uh, from UPM and then uh, from Japan yeah uh, then Dr. Nosharriza here and from Unity of Bath from Korea from UK and from Germany yeah so they have contributed a lot in my career and also in my research at the same time I already expand my expertise to these panties from all over uh, from different universities whether it is a uh, private university or uh, um, government university all right to expand the knowledge on timber so that we can express the development of timber industry in Malaysia so in fact they are my students now they are working at this respective uh, university so I urge them to continue working on timber and expand the timber industry all right so I also would like to uh, uh, express my appreciation to my main collaborators the first one is Malaysian Timber Industry Board and I have representative from Malaysian Timber Industry Board which is Puan Masuri which has helped me a lot yeah, in also uh, promoting uh, the use of timber in con construction. And besides that, uh, working closely with JKR and then uh, Woodsfield, Nation Timber Council, Kilang Papa Muhammad Yusof, Sapulot. This is only for timber, but for other type of research, I have other types of collaboration. And for international collaborator, I have Jugen Decker, Rubner, Rotafix, to name a few. All right, so we have the recent one is the base bahe, but it's more for bamboo. That will be my another branch of research in the future with my research team later. All right, all right. Now, at the same time, along the way, uh, my research career, we have received more than two million equipment that stationed in Faculty of Juran Awam, and this uh, has made uh, our lab suitable for industry application. All right, to generate income for the industry. And as mentioned before, this is some of my achievement. I will not have uh, to elaborate anymore. But I have uh, 11 copyrights and waiting for pattern too. So hopefully we'll get it soon. Yeah. Um, then we are actually working with industries to commercialize some of the product. All right, now for global visibility and branding, I have been invited as keynote and guest lecturer in international conference or forum, about 13 events uh, from six countries, and then keynote lectures at national conference and forum 40 times, and then invited trainer at lab and workshop at 15. Before that, I don't realize this is my numbers. I've, now, because I want to prepare this, I start counting, then I realize I have been talking a lot. Yeah? Now, so these are my topic for my uh, professional lecture. I will touch on sustainability and wooden structures, renaissance in timber construction, modern wood building system, and then focus on Malaysia and timber where I will show uh, some of my work, how to uh, put our timber into international market and also being used by the engineers in Malaysia. All right, and then uh, some advancement in tropical engineered product for the construction. All right, when we talk about uh, timber, people always relate that we jeopardize our forests. All right, we cut forests. Then comes in environmental problem, you know, landslide and then uh, uh, flooding and so on. Yeah, but that is the other perspective from people the one that who doesn't understand actually on how we can put timber in the positive side all right now the impact on the sustainability or the world environment is on the population growth and also urbanization that will cause the global warming 
all right, from the material that we use for construction. There are many other factors, but I just want to talk about timber, right? What impact of timber into the environment? Okay, so in order to overcome the global warming, we have to look at the sustainable material for construction. We only talk about the, the material for construction industry. All right, now, for the impact of construction to the environment is that in terms of energy, the construction industry represents 35 to 40 percent of the national energy consumption in order to produce the, the, the uh, construction material. And once we build the construction, it will produce solid waste and represent 25 percent. And at the same time, it will take up 50 percent of our primary resources to do the construction. Mainly we use Sand, we use aggregates, yeah, and we use steel, and they are non-renewable construction material. But people don't relate that for the global warming. People hardly relate that on the impact on the environment. When it comes to cutting the trees, oops, wow. Where's the, okay, when it comes to cutting the trees, then people have so much making so much noise about that so for due to this we have to look at the long life of building products affects our sustainability now why we have to build using timber there are many facts that i can elaborate but i only mentioned about the, the most important one timber use very low energy to produce for one kilogram of material timber use the least energy compared to other construction material. In terms of carbon absorption, timber the only material that absorb carbon dioxide, but the rest emitted carbon dioxide. And also, in terms of construction, uh, timber has strength, better strength to weight ratio. To put this in a perspective, all right, this bridge, Felisa Bridge in Norway, was built in 2003 with span of 70.5 meter and it's only one carriageway, all right? But due to the expansion of the traffic, they have to widen the bridge, but they want to increase cost because if they have to demolish everything, it will cost a lot. So they want to maintain, the pier has actually put the higher price, uh, increase the price of the construction. So the only material that can be used to construct this bridge is by using timber. I'm the engineer who inspect, is it? No, <laughs> no, I just went there to visit. All right. Okay, now, uh, in terms of sustainability effect of timber, we know that timber is renewable resources. In terms of construction, because it's very uh, clean material, so if uh, speed construction can be done, and then it has very less, less pollutant and also biodegradable residues. But in terms of abundant resources, that is a question mark in Malaysia right now. And we can see from the export of a timber product, the logs has decreased from years to years. So it shows that we have very limited sources of timber. All right. So then that will come to sustainability. If we want to have sustainability uh, building system, we also need to have sustainability material supply. All right. For timber also, we need to have sustainable forests. So how to get this uh, sustainable uh, construction material from timber, how to sustain that, that means the government has to put the policy, uh, the political, uh, people have to um, appreciate our timber, and we have to do selective management system. This is the one that actually uh, being promoted, but some or other along the way is not really being practiced. All right, and then we have to start looking at plantation timber, which can we can harvest them in 15 years, not waiting for 50, 60 years, 70 years, or 100 years to get that timber. All right, and we have to start looking on the engineered timber product. Instead of using large log, we can use small log, but we have to have the same performance of the solid timber. Now, so in terms of uh, revolution of timber industry. Uh, construction industry, let's look at some of the historical multi-story timber structures in other world. Actually, I have a lot of uh, slides to show, but I reduce it to, to accommodate our time. This is uh, Yingxian Pagoda in China, built in 1056, height 67 meters. At that time, they already got the te uh, technology to build multi-story building. 
and is still standing until today. So when people question about the durability of the timber, we have proven that the timber can stand very, very long. All right, and also the uh, stiff church Norway was built in 12th century. I also have the opportunity to visit that and it's still standing until today. And then Pagoda Nara uh, was built in 7th century at 32.5 meter height and considered as the oldest timber building and still standing until today. All right, even this Todeji, uh, Todeji temple in Nara built in 1709, but you can see that why they can still standing and still strong because they use the whole lock. All right, the whole pole. So that will become problem now. All right, same thing as hangar uh, in California. All right, 52 meter high, but when we put uh, to the uh, perspective, that Torijic um, temple is only can fit inside this hangar. It does show that how big is this hangar. All right, and it's still standing until today. Similarly, if you go to Japan, Osaka, definitely you will visit this castle. All right, it's also built uh, in 1609, seven stories, and still standing until today. And you can see that the column here is made from the whole lock. Yeah? It's a pole. All right. Similarly to uh, Istana uh, Sri Mananti, okay, we uh, I have the opportunity to work together with the team to do the repair of this uh, Istana. All right, and you can see that this tower is built from four columns of straight pole. So huge, and it is 50 feet high. All right. So consider as whole three whole tree to be used to construct this column all right and then the because of the nature of the pole it cannot be have same cross section from bottom to top so bottom cross section is 13.5 and the top is only 10 and anyway the weight at the top is less compared to you know it to transfer bottom so bottom will carry the higher higher load all right so we know that the the natural resources of timber is not the same Previously and now. Previously, one lorry can fit only one log, but now one lorry, we can fit many, many logs. So you can see that the strength reduces so much from that to that. Okay? And at the same time, so this was before, people, it's very small, and this is the large one. All right? But now, I'm taller than the logs. All right? And also, uh, if we have some, but very rare and very limited and become very, very expensive. This project, we want to find Chengal to replace the, uh, the column for the Istana Sri Minanti because the Sultan wants or original uh, Chengal and one piece, you know, but it's very difficult to get. And then it will dry very slow. So at the end of the day, we also cut. But the history, uh, we have to explain why we cannot do that. All right? And also, at the same time, we, uh, the timber have uh, defect in the middle. So you cannot cut full beam, full column from one log because there are defects in the middle. All right? So therefore, it's not the same as the way we, we were. All right? So therefore, we need to look at other form of material and also construction technique. So therefore, there are many engineered timber products has been established overseas, like glue laminated timber, structural wood product, laminated vinyl lumber, parallel strand lumber, laminated strand lumber, so many types, eh? oriental strand board. And then we have cross laminated timber, doorway laminated timber, nail laminated. These are to name some of the engineered timber products whereby we can use smaller cross section, glue them together and have cross section that we want for the construction, all right, for, for the structural element. So, Europe standard has already come up with the product standard to produce uh, solid timber. In order to get longer length, they have to do finger jointed and using glue. And then the section may be not enough to support load. You can combine two together, they become glue product. But then, uh, but if you arrange it differently, and then it becomes glue lamp, uh, glue lamp and the timber. And then you want to make a panel, a board to for slab. Uh, then we can arrange it differently like this so you can have bigger section instead of taller section. All right? 
And then uh, there are also, uh, because of the machine, it's not enough to accommodate uh, 10 by 10 or 20 by 20 or 20 by 30 uh, panels. So they can combine the two panels together by using finger jointed machine. All right, uh, so it can go on and go on. Even this one, one piece here is glue lamp, but the cross section may not enough to support the load. We can glue together a series of glue lamp, become block glue lamp, and then this will become uh, suitable for certain uh, load to apply. All right, so now we have start talking about um, constructing uh, timber structures from uh, low rise to high, high rise. All right. By using light structure previously, we're only using sawn timber, but then uh, we clad it with uh, laminated a product like, um, like plywood, OSB, to make the panel, or we can use glue lamp for posts and beams, and then we can use CLT plate as a load bearing, no need column and beam anymore to construct the structures, but also we can become hybrid uh, Combine it with different uh, timber material, steel, glass, and concrete. All right, so that the stability of tall building is there. All right, now. So these are some of example how beautiful of this product being used for structure. All right, before this solid timber, you cannot curve it nicely. All right, and this one also I have many. And this one also, because of the technology of gluing, you can curve it at certain degrees without breaking. Okay? And also, how beautiful is this building? We have timber structure clad with glasses. All right? So this one is actually available overseas. If you Google, you have many, many types of timber building all over the world. Now, they have... Uh, uh, the, 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 the timber structures have moved from three stories up to 30 stories in Canada and in 2035 there will be 34 stories in Stockholm all right so from normal housing timber into gigantic building structures now let's talk about Malaysia and timber construction before I go into my actual lecture I have to explain a little bit <laughs> all right now uh, National Timber Industry Policy uh, 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 has been developed by MTIB, Timber Industries, uh, to come up with a roadmap for the timber industry in Malaysia. They have National Furniture Design Roadmap 2017-2025. This uh, UITM uh, faculty should have this, so that when we develop our syllabus, we know what is going on in the planning of the government on the timber uh, perspective, all right? And also roadmap for furniture industry, FSG can take up on that one, and then roadmap on IBS technology, IBS promotion, IBS training and technical support, and they have seven trusts related to timber industry, okay? And also, they try to promote the use of IBS for timber, all right, these are some of the, uh, the, the, the amount that they uh, uh, export for the timber product. All right, uh, but somehow rather, even though they have IBS timber product, they have timber and timber product like sawn timber, plywood, door frame, all right, and then some using for column and beams, very limited, but for construction, it's only 10%. All right, so um, that's why my research is actually to promote the use of timber in construction all right so we know already these are the product available overseas whether we can adopt the same product in Malaysia or not whether the industry will take up this one or not then we have to think about that all right so in order uh, to build uh, timber uh, uh, structural using timber because it's more sustainable material to be used we need to have sustainable timber supply we need, we need standard development, we need to do promotion, education and training. We have to develop or we have to create talents, uh, civil engineer talents, in order for them to be able to design timber structures. We need architects to be able to appreciate timber in their design. All right? And also we need to have specific policy on the use of IBS timber for construction. Because right now, 70% uh, of the construction must use IBS. All right, but mainly for concrete and steel. 
So we want to say that at least 10 percent of 70 percent, 70 percent must be timber because right now mostly are being used as decorative, all right, in the construction, but not mainly for column for beams eh, to support the structure. Okay, so in order for us to have modern timber construction, what do we need? We need structure timber design. We need a standard to manufacture all the products so that when the industry produce, we can inspect, we can audit whether that can be, because we are talking about structure application, so it has to be strictly followed. Then, when they design, they have to follow uniform building bylaw. And also JKR standard specification, CID build this specification. At the same time, when built using timber, we have to get approval from fire department because timber is considered as combustible material. All right, so people are worried whether it will be, uh, will burn under fire. The safety must come first. So how to overcome all this? So. Uh, we have committee uh, for timber structures, and I'm the chairman of the timber structures. So we strategically plan for the revision of the current standard, propose new standard, promote standard, and also we conduct uh, training. So uh, MS 404 Part 5 is because in order for us to construct uh, the, the structures, we need connection, uh, bolts and nuts. So we have to develop standards for jointing. And then MS for forward part one to part three is already published in 2009. Revision is for the solid timber. And then uh, we need to produce glue laminated timber in Malaysia. So the industry has to follow certain standards. So we have manufacturing standard for MS 758. And then uh, we also have uh, recently we are working on developing the, the uh, protocol for manufacturing of CLT, which will plan to complete it in 2022 so that the industry can follow. And then, uh, again, to overcome the fire department requirement, we have to have a design on fire performance. So MS for 4 part 9, so we hope we can complete it in 2023. And then MS for 4 part 12 on laminated vinyl lumber. But these are based on limit state, uh, permissible stress design. Now the design method has changed, have moved from permissible to uh, limit state design, which I will not be able to explain the difference in here at this moment. But at least you, uh, everybody will, will, will know that there are two methods of design. One is permissible, another one for limit state. So if you want to move along with the, the rest of the world in terms of design, for more safe uh, and economical, we have to design it based on limit state design. Therefore, we need to prepare standard relevant to that for each type of material. All right? So that's open a lot of research. All right? So that's why my research embarked towards that related to uh, a standard the industry can use, the product can be produced by the industry, is not just basic sciences. Start with sciences, grow until it can be commercialized, but not only commercialized, it can be used by engineers, by architects, and by contract contractors. So that's the journey that I want to bring all of you today. Okay, so these are the design codes in Malaysia, but these are based on permissible stress design. These are all design standard for different types of material solid timber, glue, lamp, such a plywood, cement, uh, bonded particle board, and then we need to join, so we have joint st uh, standards. We have uh, overcome uh, fire resistance, so we have, uh, don't, we need to know how to design in terms of fire requirement, and then preservative, all right, and then laminated uh, vinyl lumber for structural application. Besides that, we also look at the manufacturing standards, all right, for roof truss and also for the uh, glue laminated timber because at that time we have only for glue laminated timber. Now, again, in terms of design standard, there are uh, Malaysia standard right now still use permissible stress design. It's very conservative. We are using data from small field specimen. The actual one, long section, definitely there are defects. So when we use small field specimen data, we have to input a lot of uh, safety factors. So instead of small cross section of beam, now become larger cross section of beam. So it's not economical. So that's why European also started with permissible stress design, then they have already changed to limit state. Design is based on large size specimen, it's for more economical, and they have already designed data for glue lamp and CLT, which we don't have. All right? So therefore, 
we need to uh, develop uh, a standards for this product. So we need to do some testing to gather the data so that we can develop the standard. Can we adopt European standard? We cannot adopt it directly because there are temperate hardwood and softwood timber. Ours is tropical hardwood. So they have different characteristics. So it's not like steel and concrete, grade 40 concrete. In UK, it's a similar 40 concrete. Uh, 40 grade concrete in Malaysia because it's designed, it's man made. All right, but timber is a natural product, they are not the same. All right, so therefore, my work, related research work for me in developing a development of manufacturing and design standard, I work on manufacturing standard of LVL, glue lamp, and also cross laminated timber. The recent one, I also do the design standard for solid timber, design standard for glue laminated timber, design standard for laminated vinyl lumber, design standard for connection, okay, design standard for fire resistant, design standard for limit state. This is the one that we're going to embark now, all right, and limit state for fire requirement and also for engineered timber product. All right, so the first product that I want to mention is on laminated vinyl lumber which is one of the product that we can use for joists, can use for beam, can use for column. All right, the production is we have to peel the log. So there also must be investigation. Not all timber can be peeled. All right, so then we do clipping, we have to dry. So we need also to know what is the drying temperature suitable for different types of uh, species. So that also research coming in. All right, and then uh, because of uh, not long enough, so they will have to do scarf joint. And then because, of, uh, because when we peel, there are holes uh, along the way. So we have to do patching, gluing, laminating, and then we do cold press and that. At the end of the day, we have that laminated vinyl lumber. This one, we received grant 225,000 in conjunction with UPM at that time. It was, this was my first project on uh, timber per se, directly. So based on this project, after we're doing all the testing, we produce data for design. And this data has been incorporated in MS 544 part 9, part 12. And we produce books on manufacturing, on the properties, all right? And also we improvise uh, the manufacturing standard for laminated vinyl lumber, production of laminated vinyl lumber. All right, so from sciences, we carry up until can be used by the engineers, by the industry. All right, now. As I mentioned before, our uh, design method is based on uh, permissible stress design, based on data gathered from small clear specimen. Therefore, we need to change our design method into uh, limit state design, so the data has to be tested again by using structure size specimen. Structure size specimen can be 100 by 120 by, can be 6 meter, 7 meter. All right, it's not by uh, 50, by 90, by, by 1.8 meter only previously. Now it's by 7 meter, by 12 meter length, you know, it's huge. All right, this is to develop Eurocode 5 Malaysian version design standard based on permissible stress design, at the, uh, limit state design. At the same time, we need to come up with the strength classes for Mal Malaysian timber. So previously in MS 544 part two, the design data here is based on small clear specimen. In MS 544 part three, which is we used to design glue laminated timber based on solid timber, uh, but uh, the data is by conversion from small clear specimen to large size specimen. We adopt from British standard 5268. We don't do the testing. We adopt from there. And we found that it is not totally correct because the data come from Southeast Asia. All right, so it's not necessarily timber comes from Malaysia, it's from Southeast Asia. So we have to put higher safety factor again, our dimension or cross section of the, uh, of the structural element will become huge and will cost a lot. So inside uh, European uh, British standard comes uh, BSEN, uh, the DOP, Kapo, Balau, Kempas, and uh, Merbau, and Keruing. So South uh, Asian countries, this a lot, these are all producer of uh, hardwood timber, so we don't show from which country the, the, the uh, UK took it last time. Okay, so therefore we need to do something. Our uh, present standard MS 4 part 3 adopted BS 5268 in 1998. 
these are the classes, but they have evolved. The standards have evolved from smokeless specimen to large size specimen. You can see that Balau previously D70 now goes to D50. So reduce a lot from 50, 70 megapascal to 50 megapascal. So in terms of uh, exporting, uh, the price lower now. Do we agree with that when they manipulate the data and change their standard from 70 to 50? So we don't want that, okay? Because that we lose our 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 uh, spot value, all right? So therefore, uh, they explain why they change, how they change, all right? But uh, we need to investigate because they manipulate on the current data. They are not testing new new sets of timber, all right? So they they convert from small clear to large size by using this modification factor. So in order to overcome that, we have to do some testing. Now, in Eurocov, to design based on limit state, they have to come up with new strength classes in E entry 88 for hardwood timber. Start with D, mean hardwood. If you, there's another table, C means softwood. Yes, but these hardwood are from temperate, from Europe. All right. So can we adopt European standard directly? We have to investigate. All right. So these are for softwood. Uh, start with C. Again. Uh, they only did bending test and the rest to get uh, design value for compression, tension, and so on. They use formula. They develop formula, all right, to, to get that. So, you know, uh, then at the same time, uh, they also develop tensile classes, all right, for designing glue lamp. Uh, uh, that will be later. So, in order for us to embark on the project to develop our own. Uh, strength classes for tropical timber in large size and be accepted in European community, I have to study it correct and the right foot. I cannot just simply do the test, get the, the bending and then declare it. No. Because at the end of the day, I want our data to be accepted and incorporated in European standard. So therefore, in order to do that, I'm glad that I am able to Collaborate uh, with these well-known people in the European Standards Committee, uh, Dr. Simon Eicher, Dr. Jural in the Eurocode, and also Stefan. Yeah, he's the chairman of the European Timber Structures Committee. So we need to work with them. So in order to run the test because of large size, we need uh, equipment. So MTB has sponsored us 2.3 million torsion uh, machine, the only one in Malaysia right now. So any university can use it, but they have to pay. Yeah, even my student from other university, they have to pay for us. All right. So, but to complement that, I can also provide us with tensile machine 2.5 million because the sample is so large, we cannot. Our current machine will not be able to accommodate that. So, in order to be relevant, the data we have to take the sample from all over Malaysia because timber in Sarawak is the same, not the same in Terengganu, in Johor, in Pahang. So, it has to be representative of all that. All right. So then timber must, in order to be uh, accepted and published in ISO standard and also in European standard, we must prove that the timber comes from sustainable forests. Uh, we go to that extent, not just buy from the uh, sawmill anywhere and do the timber. All right, do the test. Then uh, the sample almost twenty thousand number. These are my students who completed that. Other students do five sample enough, 20 sample enough, they do millions, thousands, thousands of sample. All right, pity them. All right, so these are some tests. So they also come, came to, inf to inspect whether the, the methodology that we do is correct or not correct, comply with their standard. And we found that their uh, testing standard does not really, uh, really comply to our team. They are, uh, the rate that they put, let's say, 10 millimeters per second is for that soft wood. Our timber is so hard. So we have to change. So there are modifications in terms of the, the, the standard, the testing standard that they provide, actually. All right? So we, that's the one that we're going to do. So based on that, we come up with our new strength class. Then this one, now in the process of um, getting approval from European uh, Technical Committee, and once it is approved, this one will be appear in our new standard design. And also, we will push it into ISO standard. And hopefully, Dr. Simon can help 
to put it into European code. Then, then when they buy our timber for design, they don't use their standards whereby they can save material for design. Yeah? Okay. Then, along the way, we also modify some of the formulas, some of the modification that available in the European standard to accommodate our timber. So we also develop new formula. We develop new things. All right. So this one will be incorporated into our standard later on. So the outcome of that, uh, uh, we use it for our code uh, because UITM is the only uh, FKA is the uh, UITM is the only faculty that offers masters on timber design. And we still maintain in undergraduate. Some of the university does not cover that. So we become center for timber design. That's the one that we want. All right. So later on, these are the new standards that we carry. Then we also want it to be in the European uh, in ISO standard. I am also the committee member for all these uh, standard ISO. We have been rotating from country to country. So I make a lot of traveling, meet a lot of friends. All right, uh, that's where you, you go for internationalization. All right, the next one, I want to talk about glue laminated timber. You have to be patient with me today. All right, it's my special day, so you have to wait. All right, okay, so the next product that I want to talk about is the glue laminated timber from logs. Uh, uh, we sawn it into sawn timber, and then if not long enough, we finger jointed them and then put glue in between and then uh, press it, it become glue laminated timber. It's not as simple as that. So because a lot of study, a lot of uh, parameters need to be considered. All right. All right. So uh, again, previously we have a design for glue laminated timber based on permissible stress design. So we want to move to limit state design. And in the uh, European code, it mentioned that here, if we are not be able to see that, for glue laminated softwood timber only. So we cannot adopt 100% the Euro code 5 because some of the data there specifically mention on uh, softwood timber. So we need to get what is the new modification factor that relevant to our timber. So if engineer wants to design glue lamp structures based on this, they have to put a lot of uh, uh, safety factor on that. So then it will cost more, okay? Because the section from small become, become large, all right? So again, we need to have the T classes, uh, the tensile test of the finger jointed lamella, the tensile test of the lamella alone, because these are required in terms of design of glue laminated timber. So, so far in the Eurocode EN14080, so they have glue lamp of strength 20 megapascal up to 32 megapascal. And then this one equivalent to T classes, uh, 10 megapascal, tensile test, 10 megapascal. Uh, and then the bending strength of the finger joint is 25. So when we did our test, we did locally, and also we sent some to German to validate the test method that we do, because we cannot send all, uh, because it's very expensive. So we send it to University of Stuttgart. We collaborate with University of Stuttgart. So these are the number of samples that we send to them for them to do the test. All right, uh, we send only crewing and light red maranti. They do a series of tests. And then uh, these are the bending strength for Malagangai. We found it with GL40. In European code just now, the highest grade is GL32. Our Malagangai is SG3, and the class is GL440. And then, uh, so these are the design. A table for glue laminated timber in European code, all right, up to 32 only, uh, from 20 megapascal up to 32 megapascal. So when we did our timber, we have crewing of GL44, light maranti, because it's lower density, GL22. So that means our is G, crewing is, GL, uh, is um, strength class 5, all right, SG5. So still much higher than their highest timber, all right? So if we want, we, we don't have this data, and you can see that the tensile strength is 50, 19, 50, here is only 26, all right? And then bending strength, ours is 80, and they, the highest is only 41. 
So if we want to use their standards, their data to design for beam of 24 meter span with same applied load for GL28, the size is 80 by 228, but if you are using GL44, it's 80 by 144. So this only for one beam. So we are using many, many beams, so it will save us a lot. All right, so how important that? Then we also decouple more power and so on and so on. This one is done in with. So with this collaboration, now our data has been published in European Technical Committee. European Technical Committee has been approved. So now we need to help industry to export the product. In order for Malaysia industry to export the product overseas, their timber product must be certified by European Committee. All right? So we go to, the, to that length so that our industry can sell the product not only locally but also in Europe. All right? So to do that, we have come up with route to CE marking. We teach them how to get their product, get the CE mark, and then get to be exported okay, overseas. We lose this project. We bid for the Cebu Airport, Philippines. Okay? They like to use our timber because they know that our bit of the data that we produce and all that, uh, they know that they can save a lot, but then our product is not yet CE mark. Okay, so that one, the, the committee and MTIB, we try to help the industry to get the CE mark because that's the only way that the, the, this product can be exported overseas, even in Singapore. Even in Singapore. If you go to Singapore, there are a few buildings already built using glue lamp and CLT but imported from Finland. We are very near, but they cannot buy it because we don't have the CE mark to guarantee that the production control is good. All right, because this is for structural application. Okay, so now with this uh, project, the outcome is we will have new version of MSEN338. We will have MS ISO122-3. Uh, we also have uh, BS, uh, MSEN14080 in the process. I will show you the gun chart when we want to, it to, to be published. All right, and for this, we also... Uh, prepared books, hopefully will we'll publish soon, on the manufacturing of glue laminated timber and some properties of the glue laminated timber. And because of that project, we have few companies emerge. From this study, we have Woodsfield Glue Lamp Manufacturing in Johor Bahru, and then we have Pekka, all right? Uh, so we help them. In fact, they, they got the machinery from MTAB. Uh, but to get uh, the, uh, the contractors, the builders to believe in this product. So the lot of promotion need to be, to be done. All right. So based on this product, we have built, I'll show you some of the buildings in Malaysia has already been built using glue laminated timber because we are not export, so we don't have to have the C marking, but we check their product production. Yeah. So this one is the, the uh, glue lamp gallery in Johor Bahru. And then the timber also being used for uh, MITI exhibition pavilion in Milan. All right. And then TLDM blue mod, uh, because it's very near to the sea, it was designed based on steel. Uh, so you become corrosion, uh, coro uh, will have problem in corrosion. So replace it with timber, we still maintain the same cost and yet we make profit out of it. So people say that timber is expensive uh, still, but this project shows that we can replace it using timber without additional cost. And yet the company make profit. And then we have the CF Cross for Future uh, Research Crops in um, Semenye. And then uh, Roof Trust Hospital still, it was collapsed because of the so many uh, services hanging. It was not designed for. So in order to, uh, uh, to speed construction and then uh, to be able to have a wider uh, area, so we use glue lamp, all right? Without have to remove all the patient, all the machinery and all that. So we managed to do it by using glue lamp. And then uh, to show to showcase that timber also uh, friendly to weather, people were afraid that it will it's not good in terms of durability. We have it uh, some example in uh, Taman Negara Kukup, yeah, uh, mangrove area, 
and it's also imitate the shell all that yeah so it's there you can go and then Ritz Carlton Hotel Langkawi again this bubu at first was built using steel it start to corrode then we change to glue glue lamp and then uh, also built for the warehouse now restaurant use it sugar bun and then pizza restaurant in Johor Bahru also using it and the latest one is also on the restaurant yeah okay so now last one is on the uh, CLT which is my current project still active okay almost finished so still using uh, long um, sawn timber but now we uh, cross each other all right so that we can have bigger panel all right so these are some of the uh, method so these are the products some cross this way another one cross that way because we can make it into big panel so it saves a lot of time then we can just do opening uh, window the door and then connect that together like lego so you can have the building that's it very very fast all right so this is multi story in um, this one is um can't remember it's somewhere in germany all right okay so you can see that they don't no no need beam and column the whole panel as load bearing wall as load bearing just cut opening for the window and just connect each other with proper design of connection all right and then you can build this very fast okay i'll show you at the end the video on the construction of the building so in order to do that malaysia wants to have this product available and for design purposes we need to have manufacturing standard all right so again uh, right now iso standard on clt is still under draft so if we have our data we can incorporate in that uh, iso standard some of the clauses pertinent to uh, tropical hardwood so in order to do that we cannot start from scratch because uh, we don't want to make so many try and error and take longer time we want to do it very fast and the product can easily accepted by the industry locally and internationally and the standard we can change it very fast rather than have to wait five or six years so we conducted our production of clt at germany and also in italy so say travel banyak lah ya but it's not easy to convince them to to cooperate with us in the manufacturing of this not many people can bring your product into their factory and look at their technology all right so alhamdulillah i have good connection uh, connection and also with support from mtib we managed to do it alhamdulillah all right okay so there are two method is one is the by uh, hydraulic press another one is by vacuum press why because the cost to uh, produce by using this method is only 600000 but the machinery for this can goes to 10 million so as a start we want to give the industry opportunity all right start small and then after that grows bigger so we have both method of production of clt all right so we are not only thinking of producing one panel but we also have to think whether there is industry also not to take up this project if it is the capital is too much and there's no guarantee there will be uh, public to use it that's of course the the, the 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 product will not be used in malay malaysia so we have to think along that way all right so these are uh, the production uh, of clt in the factory okay so can we start the video just small uh, just short uh, video on the product. So the finger pointer lamella is already plain and then arranged as one size of panel and then, uh, then bring it into another uh, conveyor belt and then put the good glue and then bring another cross, uh, uh, cross section, uh, the one that cross uh, lamination put on top and then another one another one so we have to build three layers five layers seven layers in the odd numbers right there's a reason for that possibility and they did uh, because their machine their glue is already specified for um, certain
on the glue suitable or not for our partner to be used. If not uh, suitable, the bonding is not good. All then is be done in the lab. Once uh, uh, completed that one, then bring to the industry, and the industry will change that for the So this is the first uh, CLT uh, we did crewing and light wrap ranty. The first production of CLT from Malaysia Tropical Hardwood in Europe. Now they have experience producing CLT from us. Hopefully they will buy timber from us if they are finding that it is good. And then we show that the strength is much higher. So for a smaller section they can combine. Actually there are a lot of study can be done. The middle section can be uh, European timber top and bottom because we need the compression and tension. Uh, for, for, for design purposes so we can use our timber. So there's opportunity for us to export more. Alright, okay, so the outcome, we come up with a technical guide for protocol of cross how to manufacture cross laminated timber from Malaysian timber. We're going to do MSISO 16692 and then we have one factory that producing CLT now. Alright, see how it goes from research into industry. All right. Another issue, fire. We also have to tackle. If not, the, the, the fire department will not uh, approve our, our um, uh, timber structures, especially when it goes more than three stories, more than six stories. All right. Okay, because we also always say that timber is combustible. Now, if a bomber uh, does not approve, you can never get insurance covered. All right, and then if they want to cover, you will put 30% higher. That will put off the contractors, the developer, into that. All right, and also the UBBL, Uniform Building Bylaw, we need to have uh, look at the, the, the law and then we have to change the law because inside that law, it says that the, the, the beam, the column, the compartment floor must be built or must be constructed using non-combustible material, timber gone. All right, timber is considered combustible, but we have to make it such a way that it is considered as non-combustible. All right, so I'm heading the committee looking at the revision of the UBBL together with the fire department, MTIB and industry and so on. Alhamdulillah, we have made some progress on that one, now waiting for the parliament to approve the law. But at the same time, we have to educate Bomber, things change. It's not like before. When I say that they are very sensitive, now it's life. <laughs> now it's life. But then we have got very good cooperation with them. They are very supportive. Yeah. Uh, even now, uh, we're going to construct one building using CLT in Sabah, and the fire department very supportive. They agree with that after we show some proof to that. Yeah. So uh, in order to um, to prove that, there are two ways. One is by full scale testing, another one is by design method. So I'm going for design method because full scale testing, it will cost a lot because you have to construct large size building and then put fire, burnt. All right? So that's very expensive. So we have to do by calculation. So there are two parts when it starts at night, then after the fire build up, then slowly uh, the, the structure lose its inter integrity. So there are two parts that we need to take care of, the fire resistance and also reaction to fire, how it contribute for the fire development. All right, so the reaction classification for, for timber, in European standard, wood is at D class. All right, so we did a reaction test in University of Stuttgart because we don't have the equipment for this. Even, even in Malaysia, we don't have that for the large size. So we did a test in Europe and we found that uh, for glue lamp crewing, instead of class D, we push to class C. So our timber is actually not easily catch fire, but engineered timber product, when you design it, all right, not just simply normal wood stick for fire, that one is burned easily, all right, that you have to have design. And um, fire department worried about the, uh, the toxic smoke, so we did also test on that. We have class one, very little smoke. We have to go to that extent. Now, to design fire resistant, European code in EN1 NF5-1-2, 
all right, specify on how to design timber structures using uh, 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 to overcome fire, whichever um, uh, mentioned in UBBL, two hours or three hours or half an hour. All right, in order to do that, when we put uh, the section into fire, there will be reduction of cross section and also consideration of heated. All right, so we have to look at how much the, the, the timber is being charred. All right. So uh, we can design it by using notional charring rate. These are the current in MS5459 based on strength grouping for BS5268. It's based on density. And then now recent one, Eurocode 5 also based on density. They have for soft wood, they have soft wood glue lamp, but there's don't, they don't have hard wood glue lamp. And also for the LVL. So therefore, we have to change our uh, charring rate instead of using uh, strength grouping because uh, the charring rate depends on the density, not based on strength. So we have to change that. So we did some study. We did uh, at, uh, a fire test at Trada and also in Sweden and latest we did it in Frim. So that we learn from here, we learn from there and then we did in Frim. All right. So in Eurocode, there are two uh, formula to use, two, two parameter to use, beta 1 and beta 2, uh, which is for the floor like this, it's only fire is only one-sided. For column, it can be three, three-sided. So we design column different than we uh, design for floor slab. All right, so we need to have these two data. So these are the tests conducted in Trada. Yeah. And then we get the charge rate 0.44. In uh, MS449, it's 0 0.7, but we have 0 0.44. It's much lower. All right. And then uh, for one-sided test, we test in Sweden. We have also 0 0.69. This one is for one-sided test. All right. And then we did in Frim for two-dimensional and also for three-dimensional for different species. All right. And then also for solid timber, for glue lamp, and also for LVL. And we measure, this is the original piece, when at, after half an hour, okay, we have to calculate what are the sharing rate available. There are so many formulas, so we have to come up with our own justification. And then we, we have our, these are the, the, the uh, value that we recommend for time being. We need to do more just to validate. We, very, we use very small uh, numbers, all right? Now... Overseas, they are looking for tall stories, 80 stories clock tower in London, and then 120 story in China. All right, Malaysia, no. two stories at most. All right, so we have to push, all right, because of sustainability of the uh, material. And then there's also mentioned that the, the belief in general wood will become the cheapest way to construct tall buildings in the future. All right. So before that, let's look at video. Very short time. They, they built in six weeks. Very, very short time. Because it's IBS, it's already, play, uh, it's already done in the factory. Bring to the side, it's very safe construction, very clean construction, and it's very fast. Uh, Pro Kamal, you not bought rumah kayu, you will be very fast. You don't have to wait for one year. Sometimes you, you, you do renovation, it takes you one year. All right. Tak boleh eh? Sangkut. Tak boleh. Tak pula. All right. It's okay. It's just to tell you that uh, the construction is... is <laughs>
I would like to say thank you to all of you, especially my children, my family, FKA staff, my beloved FKA staff, and Isam also. I was the, the pengarah at that time. And friends, students, and collaborators as well to UITM. With that, wabillahi taufiq wa daya. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Any question? Apa ni? Spotlight ni panas. Huh? Yeah, I already asked. Is there any question? Uh, to yeah. Uh, one question about the if based on the current scenario, present scenario. Uh, if the demand, okay, let's say from overseas, from the EU countries, is it sufficient enough for uh, the availability of our timber uh, or log in our forest to supply, supply to the high demand from the EU countries? And if yes, how long can sustain uh, with that demand? That's very difficult question to answer. All right. Uh, we, um, I think we and Matabi take it uh, rather uh, um, uh, not so abruptly. We realize that uh, first thing, uh, the promotion must be good to buy in. Eh? Let's say um, everything has already in place, but along the way, uh, we have uh, policy on replanting. And now we are working with OM uh, in Kelantan. They already rented uh, quite large number of land uh, from the government. Rent, uh, they rent the land uh, to uh, to to plant the, the um, plantation timber, Laran and Batai. So we cannot rely on our reserve forest uh, because for forest management, small number can only be locked. All right, we need mass number. So the best way is by plantation timber. Uh, that day also, um, I, I work also with uh, a, a company in, in Sabah. They're also looking at renting land from the government or try to uh, get some more lands from the government for the plantation. In fact, uh, Lara and Bata is already part of the uh, policy, Nati policy. All right? So we focus more on Lara and Bata because we can see the potential. Right now in the lab, and this one is actually sponsored by the industry to show that it is from Glulam, uh, from CLT, made from Laran. All right, uh, so we have already uh, some sample in our lab. Dr. Noshariza will do the testing, all right, to see the performance of Laran uh, and Batai uh, uh, CLT performance. And then if it is good in terms of glueability, and then strength-wise, and then later on, maybe FSG can help me on the treatment, okay, how to treat. Uh, Prof. Nazib can look at uh, on that one also, on the treatment, uh, how it affects on the bondability and so on. All right. So uh, the, uh, the planning is there. The planning is there. Yeah. Yeah, Prof. Nazib. Uh, Prof. Nazib. Thank you, uh, Prof. Zakia, for enlightening us on the usefulness of hardwood timbers. And I fully agree with uh, the suggestion for us to focus on the uh, forest plantations as uh, the future uh, resources yeah. mm -hmm. uh, to lessen the um, pressure on the natural forest. Yeah. But then um, things that like to make sure that when we opening up the forest plantation, we should avoid opening the natural forest for that. Uh, what we might want to do is to find the uh, degraded land. For example, in, in Sabah, Sarawak, there has been a uh, non-sustainable practice of farming mm -hmm. uh, that they, uh, uh, they do the cliff heading and then shifting cultivation. That would mm -hmm. be some of the potential for us to grow the plantations. Yeah, good. Because as we, we talk about the degraded forests, um, actually we can treat them. Because you show to us this uh, SMS, yeah? the selective management system. After logging, we can replant uh, to enrich the area. Mm. So rather than uh, clearing the remaining of the timber, we uh, treat them. But 
when you want to do the uh, the plant the, the the fast growing forest plantations, let focus on the um, the land that available, the idle land and the um, uh, degraded areas. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's what uh, the OM is doing. No more. You can ask me for the during lunch. <laughs> okay, thank you very, very much for coming, for listening. Okay. And hope it, will, it, it does uh, benefit some of you, uh, all of you. Yeah.